So now is the time for our concluding talk, concluding talk of this conference. So this is pleasure for me to introduce the talk of Andrei Piatinsky from Arctic University of Narvik. So please, the title is on the screen. I would like to thank the organizers of this conference uh, for the invitation to participate and to give a talk. It's, uh, the conference is very well organized. Uh, the atmosphere is very pleasant, nice and friendly. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and to participate. Today, I am going to uh, present some results on uh, homogenization of convolution type functionals with uh, integrable kernels. And the result uh, which I'm going to discuss and present today were obtained mostly in the framework of the joint project with Andrea Brides, mathematician from Roma, now, now from Trieste, in fact. Uh, well, and uh, the plan is uh, as is written here. First, I will discuss a little bit the uh, uh, general structure of uh, functionals with uh, convolution uh, kernel, provide some assumptions. Uh, then we uh, discuss, I will formulate uh, main homogenization and gamma convergence result for these functionals. Well, and anyway, then we consider, in fact, in many cases together, periodic media and uh, random stationary media. Because when we speak about homogenization, we need some form of uh, invariance with respect to form of shift invariance. So the generic, first we start with operators, because in application, Typically, we have uh, not immediately functionals, but operators with um, kernels, which might be non-integrable kernel of special form, like in the case of fractional Laplacian or more general Levy type operator. Or in some application, and this is our subject today, operator with integrable kernels. Well, that's so what we assume that this kernel, uh, convolution kernel A is an integrable function. And one there is just uh, some coefficient will be, which will be bounded from above and from below, satisfy so called ellipticity condition. It might be a little bit my uh, small violation of language, but I will call it ellipticity condition. And the corresponding quadratic functional. One can check easily that, this, that uh, the, if we write the corresponding minimization problem, then the corresponding earlier Lagrange equation will uh, include this uh, linear operator. So, as I said already, this A of Z is our convolution kernel, which will be always deterministic function. Uh, and A uh, is responsible for the localization property of uh, the functional or operators. In contrast with the differential operators, which are always local, here we should uh, discuss the range of localization. And in fact, function A is responsible to the, uh, for the rate of localization. Since it's integrable function, it decays at infinity, and the rate at which is, it decays, in fact, is uh, somehow our localization, uh, it's, uh, is responsible for the localization property of the operator. And the land of x, y is a coefficient, it's the same thing as variable coefficient in partial differential equations. It, re it uh, represents the local property of the media. If media is not homogeneous, then uh, lambda is uh, uh, corresponds to the local property of the environment. And since operator is non-local, this coefficient depends on two arguments. Roughly speaking, if we just think about jumps, 
it's a, a, a starting position of the jumps and, and the end points of the jump. Well, under the above assumption, this operator A is a bounded linear operator. So, as uh, in the talk of Yana, we uh, know that there will be some Markov dynamic Markov process corresponding with this generator generated by this operator. And uh, it's natural if we want to study watch time behavior. And in many applications, it's exactly our goal is to study watch time behavior of the system. Then uh, we should make a diffusive scaling, which is written here. The spatial variable multiplied by a small parameter and temporal variable is multiplied by the square of the small parameter. And we arrive at this operator. And since we are going to study the variational approach, we write down the corresponding variational functional. And our goal today is to study the limit behavior of this functional as the parameter epsilon, which is factor here and here, goes to zero. Also, we will consider more general since uh, the variational method are quite powerful. Instead of the operator, sorry, corresponding to the um, linear uh, operator quadratic function, we can, can consider more gene generic operator of this form and even more general form uh, Lagrangians. I will, uh, this, we will discuss this at the end of the talk. So P is arbitrary power, which is greater than one. The case P is equal to one will not be discussed. It's, it's, it's a difficult case. Well, we will mostly use gamma conversion techniques since it's a joint work with the people from Italian school. We should do gamma convergence and some motivation and application of uh, this operator. Uh, one very important nowadays application is population dynamics, ecological problem. If we study population of uh, some animals or plants, especially plants, then the breeding process is never local for plants. It's always some distribution. So to describe it in terms of partial differential equations is not accurate approximation. The accurate real approximation should be in terms of non-local operator. And clearly, the kernel should be integrable. That's one application. Nowadays, in mechanics, in the mechanics of porous media, there are many other models where uh, the operator of this type also appears typically with P greater than two. I uh, wrote down, you remember, fun quadratic functional and P growth functional. In uh, porous media models, typically the operators has power greater than True. I don't know why I, I'm not an expert. Well, some existing works. Existing works, I am not aware of any homogenization result for the case of integrable kernel. But for non local operator for 3D type or some more, some fractional power of more generic operator with periodic or with random coefficients, uh, the real works uh, for. Uh, in periodic media, it's the work of uh, Arizawa of 2009. Then the uh, uh, Rhodes and Varga studied the um, problem in random media. Then uh, Sandwich studied this, this problem when it was combination of differential operator and linear type operator, more, more, more generic type. Then there was an interesting work of Schwab for non-linear type operators. And finally, in two recent work by this uh, chain square, Kumagai and Wang, uh, there was, uh, uh, they uh, studied, uh, they obtained interesting results for non-symmetric linear type operator, the, and non-symmetry non, 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 non is quite difficult issue in this case. And, uh, 
Also, they studied non-uniform elliptic case, and as usually, the work of uniform ellipticity leads to a lot of difficulty. Well, and now we formulate the assumption imposed on our operator. So A is a non-negative function, which is uh, integrable. And in fact, it's more technical assumption. We will also assume that it's a two function. Then, uh, since we are going to use variational approach, we need some symmetry. And symmetry is uh, represented as uh, symmetry, usual symmetry of function lambda, and A should be an even function. And what is very important in the quadratic case, we assume that second the second moment is finite. If the second moment is not finite, then everything changes. We should use different normalization and we will obtain different limit behavior. So this condition is Crucial. This condition is just technical. We not we need only integrability. Instead of one, we can put any positive number here. But the condition that the second moment is finite is crucial. Well, then, as I told you already, I will call it uniform ellipticity. And we will assume that either this coefficient is periodic or it's statistically homogeneous ergodic. We can say the both cases. Well, in uh, the case of P growth, if instead of quadratic functional, we consider P growth functional, then condition C3 should be modified in the following way. We assume that moment of order P is finite. So in addition to the problem in the whole space, we also can consider some uh, boundary value problem for this functionals, but the functional is non local. So we should be careful with the boundary condition. What is the Neumann or Dirichlet boundary condition for non local functional? It's formulated in the following way. If we have a nice bounded domain, let's say Lipschitz bounded domain, then in the case of Neumann problem, we integrate this difference only both in X and in Y only over the domain. So uh, somehow the difference between value inside and outside is always equal to zero formally. Even if inside the values are not the same, still the increment, uh, when we, one of the points go goes outside the domain, the increment is always zero. That's a way to formulate normal condition. And this problem is well posed, as we will see. For the Dirichlet condition, we integrate over the whole space, even where if we're in the bounded domain. But we impose this condition that u is equal to zero everywhere in the complement to the domain. So we will study the problem in the whole space, Norman, with Norman condition and with Dirichlet condition. Now, a technical lemma which says that the uh, Family of function for which the corresponding energy is finite. This family is compact in LP. It's a very important statement because, in contrast with uh, uh, a similar problem for uh, function of the gradients, where compactness is for free, just comes. It's just a uh, consequence of embedding, so compactness of embedding. Here, uh, we don't have any special space. We have only estimates for the increment divided by epsilon. Epsilon goes to zero. So it's some technical work to show that the family of uh, functions with finite energy is compact. But it is the case. So since we have this compactness result for gamma convergence, you remember we need some topology. So it's natural to introduce the topology which is given by this local compactness result. Of course, we have compactness only in any bounded set. So our topology is a 
locally strong topogen, uh, convergent topologies, locally strong convergence, and globally weak convergence. So here I give the definition, classical definition of gamma convergence. I, I think here everybody knows, but let me repeat briefly that we say that. Excuse me, Andrei, what do you mean uh, in uh, uh, weak uh, convergence? Uh, is it a weak convergence in LP or it is the convergence in weak LP? Uh, uh, it's convergence in uh, weak LP over the whole space. Marcinkevich space. Yeah, for example. In, in fact, it's not so important because at the end we show that uh, stronger can work. Ah, okay. <laughs> but we, we need any space here with respect to we have, we have compactness. So any, 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 any uh, P-type space in which we have weak compactness is uh, good for us. Well, so in this definition, we remember that uh, we say that the family of functional gamma converge to the limit function of zero with respect to the given topology. If for any sequence u epsilon which converge to u in this topology, we have this so called limit of inequality. The limit of epsilon of u epsilon is greater or equal than the, the limit function of zero evalu evaluated at u. And uh, for any given u from LP, there exists a sequence u epsilon such that uh, so called limb super inequality holds. Uh, in particular, if zero might take value plus infinity, it's not forbidden. So we start with, since uh, in the case of quadratic functional, the answer is more nice, the limit for structure of limit uh, functional can be expressed in a more explicit way. I will formulate separately the results for the quadratic functional and for p growth functional. So in the case of quadratic functional, under the above assumption, assuming that uh, we have either periodicity or uh, stationarity and ergodicity in both cases and random and periodic, uh, we uh, have gamma convergence result, uh, which says that our family of epsilon can watch with respect to the topology which was introduced to the functional, quadratic function on the gradient, local quadratic functional, uh, which is uh, in fact, it's just Dirichlet integral with the, the, the positive definite matrix G epsilon if u is from H1 and uh, it takes on value plus infinity for all other function from LP. From L2, sorry. As I said already, G epsilon is a positive definite matrix. Here it's uh, written in uh, the formula, but let me skip it. It's uh, usually there is some character. The solution of cell problem. Cell problem is on the on the period in the periodic case and in the probability space. In stochastic case, it can be constructed in both cases. And the effective mat effective matrix is given in terms of this auxiliary minimization problem. Here it's written for the periodic case on the torus. We minimize over all possible function V in uh, with li this linear function. The minimum is attained, of course, and it gives us the uh, quadratic form which determines uniquely the matrix G effective. So it's a whole space. It's one integral, it's always like this, one integral sits in the integrable kernel, one integral is over Rd. And nevertheless, the operator is still operator from L2 on the torus to L2 on the torus, but we integrate over the whole space. And the, since after that we have a periodic function, the second integration should be over the torus. So that's correct, one integration is over Rd, 
The second one is over the torus. In the bounded domain, we have a similar result. Uh, so if we study the Neumann problem, then in the limit, in the, in the Lipschitz bounded domain, we have this functional and no boundary condition. In the case of Dirichlet problem, we have this functional for function from H10 of Q and plus infinity otherwise. So boundary condition, as it should be, the limit boundary condition is getting usual moment boundary condition for the functional. Here and usual Dirichlet boundary condition, homogeneous one, of course, we study here. Here, yes, sorry, it's, 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 it's a misprint. Of course, it should be uh, over Q, yeah. Well, you, you yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's over Q. And here, it's also over Q. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it's, it's, you know, copy paste. <laughs> and as you know, if the sublevel sets of our functional are compacts, then the gamma convergence implies the convergence of minimizers. So as a bypass product, we obtain homogenization result for the corresponding uh, equation for operator uh, a, a epsilon. So if we consider this family of operators, uh, and of course, we should make some small spectral shift, otherwise we are on the spectrum. After this small shift with arbitrary lambda, we know that this problem is well posed. We define solution gay epsilon, and uh, we, we obtain the following homogenization result. The solution of this problem converge to the solution of this limit problem, which is usually a uh, problem in the whole space. Pardon, uh, uh, home, uh, G home uh, is the same that GF? G home is uh, the same as here. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, effective and homogenized. Yeah. Okay. It's the, the same guy, yeah. And uh, I didn't formulate it, but the same result will obtain in the, in the case of bounded domain. Now we uh, turn to the function of P growth. And in the function of the growth, the answer is not that explicit. But what we should do, we take this minimization problem. Let's first speak about periodic case. Then in the periodic case, we take the, this minimization problem over all D from LP of TD. The minimum is attained. And we can show that this A0 function of Z is a function of P grows strictly convex and uh, satisfy classical P grows condition. And then we have the following result under the, all the above assumption uh, with respect to uh, the family F epsilon with in this, uh, index P. Gamma can watch to this limit functional. Uh, you see, it's now a homogeneous function of the gradient, it's local function, and uh, it's constant in the spatial variables, and it satisfies the classical P growth condition, so the minimum is uniquely defined. And uh, of course, in this case, we, uh, uh, again, as, as a consequence, we obtain also convergence of solution of the corresponding uh, nonlinear equations. Well, now we turn to the random case. In the random case, the result formally looks the same. Again, there is, there is, there is a limit in the quadratic case we discussed already, I skip it. And uh, in the random case, we have similar result, but there is one technical difficulty when we try to prove this result. The, the difficulty is that we want, as usually, we want with minimization functional, we want to use 
somebody see if ergodic theorem. Oops, it's here, yeah. So we want this property to be satisfied. If we have two disjoint domain, U1 and U2, we want this functional evaluated existing domain to satisfy this subadditive property. Otherwise, subadditive theorem doesn't work. But due to the non locality of our functional, especially if the uh, support of A is the whole space, this property is never satisfied. So we should do something, we should do some trick to make subadditive theorem work. And the trick is, of course, localization. What we do, we cut our kernel at the level K. So we consider the new problem where lambda K is cut. And we impose in our set U, we impose in the K neighbor along the boundary, we impose just linear boundary condition. So we modify both the kernel of the operator and also the functional. We modify the domain of this functional. We say that along the, uh, uh, where along the boundary, it should be a new function. And now the new functional is subadditive. So we can apply subadditive ergodic theorem. And we know that this limit exists just by subadditive ergodic theorem. But it's for only for each fixed K. What can we say about the behavior of this limit uh, as k goes to infinity? And the second statement is that this limit exists. And in fact, this is a natural candidate to be the gamma limit of the original functional. And then it is just technical work to prove this. Indeed, the first cutting passing to the limit and then increasing this cutoff parameter leads us to the correct limit functional for the original family. Well, at the end, we obtain a deterministic and quadratic case, a deterministic matrix A home or AF effective, it's the same. Uh, and uh, similarly, in the case of T growth, we obtain the deterministic convex functional of the gradient, uh, which, which, which is uniformly uh, convex. So, theorem was already formulated. I don't want to, 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 to go back. What we want, how much time do I have? Two minutes. <coughs> so, very briefly about perforated domain. Because uh, in the case of non-local operator, perforation is not so innocent as you can imagine. So what we assume, we assume that perforation is, is usually classical uh, assumption of dispersed time. We assume that the, our uh, inclusions are uniformly bounded in size. The distance between them is uniformly bounded from below. And these inclusions are uniformly Lipschitz, con uh, Lipschitz continuous, no cusps, no, no bad geometry. And all these conditions are uniform. Well, and then we introduce this perforation domain as usually, just we remove all these inclusions. And in the remaining part, we consider our functional. But here, we need one more condition. We should assume that our kernel A is strictly positive in the vicinity of zero. This condition was not required in the, whole, in the case of the whole space. Well, now we can see the idea in this functional. And we can formulate, yeah, uh, of course, at the boundary of inclusions, we impose Neumann condition, which means that here we integrate over, only over the complement to the inclusion. And then the result is, as in the previous cases, in the limit we have, then we have G convergence, and in the limit, gamma limit functional is a nice quadratic functional with constant positive definite coefficients.
Well, the main ingredient of the proof of compactness argument I already formulated for concrete type inequality. We use it in all the cases, but here, additionally, we need extension theorem, which is not the same as in the case differential operator because the operator is non local, so there is some extra details which should be taken into account. And should say that the, the case when this perforation is uh, can form unbounded connected component, this case was considered another work by Bryde, Schiedopiat, and Elia. Well, and of course, subadditive theorem, algorithmic uh, theorem, which we already discussed. Well, and now my time is over, so I skip everything. It just, oops, not in this direction. Yeah. And thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you. Please questions, comments. I have a question. May I? Yes, please. Uh, yes, my question is um, you play with two coefficients. In fact, uh, I did not see any formula for the A homogenized or the G effective. Did you give a precise formula for obtaining the homogenized coefficients? Maybe I, I, I lost it. It's my first question. And then uh, I have a second question. Yeah, let me show you. How do you compute? Do you have any specific way to compute this limit coefficients? My matrix. Yeah, the G, G, G effective, G. Yes, that, that's ah, okay. Okay, so you have linear that. function and we minimize over all possible function from a two over torus in quadra the quadratic case. Yes, the minimum, yes. Th that right. is a parameter. Uh, it's easy to show that the <coughs> limit expression pressure is quadratic on Z, and the coefficient of this quadratic form gives us uh, G effective. Right. My, my second question is related to this formula because you have the A and the lambda. Uh, the A has the effect of some coefficients that are homogenized, and the lambda is a kind of localization coefficient, if I understand well. So we have two phenomena, homogenization on the hand and a loc localization going from non-local to local. And you combine these two effects with the same parameter epsilon. Yeah. I'm wondering if uh, you should not make these two parameters independent, say an epsilon for, for A, and uh, delta for lambda, for instance. That means that you are choosing exactly the case epsilon equal to delta. Is it possible to do these two separate process uh, separately and having different effects? Yes, yeah, surely. But uh, the most interesting case then when, when there is non-trivial coupling between these two parameters is the case when delta and the epsilon are of the same order. Otherwise, we will first localize just by freezing one of the parameter, and then we'll pass to the limit in the in another parameter. And the problem it, it can be done what you, you, you suggest, but the procedure is getting a bit easier in this case. There are there are there are there are such results. For example, if the localization parameter is um, if localization parameter is smaller than uh, oscillation parameter. Then we should first localize, obtain the uh, partial differential equation, elliptic equation with variable coefficient, with periodic, and then homogenize it in the usual case. And the same, uh, the same thing when we have opposite picture. We, we should first take the mean value of oscillation parameter, if oscillation parameter is uh, smaller. And after that, we uh, pass to the limit in non-local operator with constant coefficient. Thank you. But do we have reference for this these last results? Do you have some reference? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay, one question. You suppose that your kernel A is. Uh, what the? Are you hearing me? You suppose that your kernel is a, an even function, yes? And 
if his condition is not satisfied, what you can say? In the case of functional, it's not a problem because we just symmetrize it and functional will not change. So we can always suppose that it is the case. Mm -hmm. But in the case of operator, it's much more difficult problem. In uh, the periodic case, it is solved. <clears throat> and there, there are results in particular, the risk homogenization result in moving coordinates. In the random case, it's really important open problem. It's a big challenge to, to do something in the random case for non-symmetric operator. Yes, non-symmetric stability can be also for <coughs> this uh, matrix lambda. Yes, yeah. it can be also not symmetric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can case. assume non-symmetry of A or lambda. Of operator, you, you may symmetri symmetrize. It, yes? Yeah, for for the function for the for the functional, we, we can always symmetrize because it's yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just want to ask, uh, when you speak about the domains, yeah, the cases of your results for domains, so the domain is a connected open set, but do we really need the connectedness assumption? Because you have the non locality, which... Uh, yeah, connectedness should be understood in uh, terms of A. The, we, we, we say that set is, we, we can modify it in the following way. Here, I assume usual connectedness, but you're absolutely right. We can uh, enlarge the notion of connectedness and say the set is co connected if for each two points of them, uh, uh, A evaluated at the difference is non equal to zero. Then, uh, even if we have a union of formal geometrically disjoint set, but A somehow homogenize them, then uh, we say that the set is still connected. Yeah. Other questions? If it is not the case, let us thank our speaker again.